In this video, we will go through the basics of writing programs in assembly language. We will write the code in both Bitmachine and LMC syntax, as well as Python for a high-level language comparison. Unlike high-level programming languages, which are more human-readable and where the code must be heavily deconstructed by the compiler or interpreter to convert it into machine code, assembly languages sit more closely to machine code, offering more control over the hardware. The layout of the programming environment is quite simple. We work in three columns. We can even think of it as a table. The first column is reserved for addresses. Here we can specify the memory address of instructions and values. We can say, for example, address 400 should hold the value apple. And this will place the value apple into address 400. Or we can use labels and say that address fruit should hold the value apple. In this case, the assembler will find the most appropriate memory address for our value. The second column is reserved for opcodes. The opcode is the instruction the CPU will execute. Here is the list of instructions you can use for Bitmachine and LMC syntax. As you can see, they are quite similar, with the key difference being that Bitmachine uses complete words for easy readability and allows multiplication and division. It also allows addressing for print and input statements. A load instruction for example, loads a value into the CPU's accumulator, whereas a store instruction will send a value from the accumulator back to memory. Print will display information, while input will allow the user to input data. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide are the basic arithmetic operations available. Jump will change the program counter to a new value, forcing the CPU to jump to a custom memory address to fetch the next instruction. This allows us to create loops or jump around memory, fetching instructions from anywhere, rather than always having to fetch the next instruction in order. If0, if nag, and if pause are conditional jump instructions. These will only jump if the value in the accumulator is 0, negative, or positive respectively. This allows for decision making and branching. The third column is reserved for the operands. The operand points to the memory address to which the instruction should apply to. For example, a load32 instruction means load the contents of address32 into the accumulator. Essentially, the opcode is do this and the operand is to this memory address. The opcode and the operand together form a complete instruction. Almost all instruction will need an operand, as the CPU needs to know where to fetch data from or what instruction to execute next and each operand will need its pair in the address column. This is the address the operand is pointing at. While we can use integer numbers to indicate specific memory addresses, we can also use labels instead for a more human-readable format and let the assembler sort out the specific memory addresses. This is like using variables in a high-level programming language. Now that we know how to construct our code, let's write a program that asks the user to guess a word until they get it right. We generally write the instructions on the top and the values at the bottom for easy readability, so we will follow that convention. Let's start by declaring the word the user will have to guess. For this, we have to store the word in memory, just like how we would do in a high-level programming language by assigning it to a variable. So let's declare the memory address and call it word to guess. Our instruction is value, indicating that a value has to be stored in memory. And finally, we add the word itself. In case of a value instruction, the operand column is where we put the data itself. Now that we have our keyword, let's write a message to the user about what they need to do. We once again have to store the data to be printed in memory, so we follow the same method as before, using the label user instruction. So now we have a variable with the instruction as well. We can now display it to the user using a print instruction. Telling the user what to do will be our first instruction, so this will go at the top. We type print and add the label for the memory address where the data is stored. In order for the user to be able to respond, we need to provide them with an input field. So let's add an input instruction. Once they provide that, the input has to be stored in memory. Thus, a variable has to be reserved for the answer. We can declare a new memory address, call it user response, and use a value instruction for an empty memory address. We can then connect the input instruction to the variable using the operand. We now have our keyword and the user's guess. It's time to decide if they are the same. While it might seem like a complex task, it can actually be done quite easily. If we were to compare two numbers together to check if they are the same number, we could simply subtract one from the other and see if the result is zero. If it is, then they are indeed the same number. 
If it is not, they are different. Because in computers everything is stored in a binary format, we can use the same exact method to find out if two words are the same. We can just subtract one from the other and check if the result is zero. First, we need to load one of the words into the CPU. It doesn't matter which one, so I will start with the keyword. I add a load instruction and use the operand to reference the keyword. We can then subtract the user's response. At this stage, the CPU will store the result of the operation and the accumulator flag will be set to positive, negative or zero, depending on the outcome. We can now use this information for decision making. In other words, branching. We can use an if0 instruction to jump to a specific instruction only if the value in the accumulator is zero. In the operand section, I put the address of the instruction, which will print the message of a successful attempt. Let's leave some room for further instructions I will have to add soon, and write a print instruction here. The instruction will display a success message, which in turn I also have to declare as a variable. Finally, the print instruction's address must be labeled so that the if0 instruction knows where to jump. If the result of the subtraction is not zero, the program counter will not be changed and the program will continue linearly. Here we can handle an incorrect attempt, so let's tell the user that they were not successful. Let's print a message about incorrect attempt and store the message in a variable. The user now has to be able to try again, so we have to jump back to the input instruction. We can use the jump instruction and link the operand to the memory address of the input instruction. And that is it. We can now assemble the program and run it. Let's see if it works. An instruction is provided, I can add an input, and after a failed attempt, I can try again. Providing the correct input, a success message is displayed. If you would like to learn more about advanced low-level programming methods, or how to use different types of addressing, click on one of these videos. If you would like to give BitMachine a go yourself, click on the link in the description.